Hey there, everybody. It's episode 50 of Whistlecake Martial Arts Radio, the only place to hear the best stories about the best martial artists, like today's subject, Jet Li. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, in case you don't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and some great apparel and accessories, all for traditional martial artists. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you returning fans. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more about us at whistlecake.com. All of our past episodes, all the show notes, including notes for this one, and a whole lot more are at whistlecakemartialartsradio.com. And while you're on our website, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to hear about upcoming guests on the Monday shows. But now, let's talk about today's subject, Jet Li. Fans of this show know that there are a few consistent answers when we ask our guests about their favorite martial arts actors. Jet Li is certainly one of those common responses. Anyone that has seen his movies knows that Jet Li brings a unique element to the films, lending a great deal of martial arts to the fight scenes. Whereas someone like Jackie Chan is beloved for his humor and creativity in those fight scenes, Jet Li is a fan favorite for the skill he displays in everything he does on screen. Born Li Lianji in Beijing in 1963, the man who would later become known as Jet Li started training at the Beijing Wushu Academy at the young age of eight. In fact, he wasn't there by choice. It was during a mandatory summer Wushu class that he was discovered. Out of over 1,000 kids, only 20 were selected to continue their training. Of those 20, Li was the youngest. By 11, he had won five national-level gold medals and started competing in the adult division at age 12. When he retired in his late teens, he had 16 medals to his name, 15 of them gold. The 16th was silver. As you might expect from his success as an actor, he didn't participate in the sparring events. It was the forms that he excelled at. His martial arts training focused on Northern Shaolin styles, and he spent a great deal of time training in several of them. His training time included a lot of experience with traditional Wushu weapons, like the three-section staff, the broadsword, and the straight sword. And you can really see his comfort with those weapons when he's using them in his movies. In fact, I would say that more so than just about any other martial arts actor that I can think of at the moment, he has a great deal of weapons proficiency, which is a sign of his deep and strong, legitimate martial arts background. He starred in his first movie in 1979, Shaolin Su, which translates as Shaolin Temple. Experts actually claim that this was the movie that kicked off the 1980s Kung Fu boom in China. And he then moved to Hong Kong and became the biggest star of these films through the 1990s. It was from his movie roles that he actually got his screen name. A publicity company in the Philippines was doing some work for one of his movies and decided that his name was too hard to say. So they just went ahead and put Jet Li on the posters. And it happened to stick. He directed his only film in 1986. It was titled Born to Defend. And you can find it on DVD for $3.99 or you can watch it on Netflix for free. Now, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but the acting does have the reputation for being terrible. In fact, in true Kung Fu movie style, it's actually just the action scenes, the fight scenes, that are what people enjoy about this movie. But actually, people say it's a pretty good movie, and Jet Li not only directs it, but stars in it. So, worth checking out. His first Hollywood role was in Lethal Weapon 4 which was actually the most commercially successful of his films. His first starring role was just a little bit later in Romeo Must Die. It was Fist of Legend that received the most critical acclaim, and that came out earlier than any of these others, 1994. If you haven't seen it, it's a remake of Bruce Lee's 1972 Fist of Fury movie. In 2010, Donnie Yen played Jet Li's character from Fist of Legend for a remake titled Legend of the Fist, The Return of Shen Zhen. While the original isn't available from streaming anywhere I can find it, the sequel is on Netflix and has been very well reviewed. I haven't seen it, but it's on my shortlist. Now, Jet Li was originally slated to play Li Mu Bai in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, 
but he didn't want to do it because he had promised his wife he wouldn't work while she was pregnant. Imagine what that film would have been like with Jet Li in the leading male role. Not that Yun Fat Chow wasn't phenomenal in that role, but Jet Li, if you can't tell, one of my favorite martial arts actors, and it just would have brought even more energy to that role. So, I don't know, I would have loved to have seen it that way, personally. He was also offered the role of Seraph in the second and third Matrix movies. And if you don't remember that character by name, Seraph was the guard to the Oracle. And he turned down that role because he felt it didn't need him. That the movies were going to be too good already. And I'm, I'm not making this up. This is why he claims he turned down those movies. That he didn't need to lend his name to the movie for what was a fairly small role. Now, one of my favorite Jet Li movies is The Forbidden Kingdom, and that's mostly because the movie had two of my absolute favorite martial arts actors, Jet Li and Jackie Chan. And I just remember watching that movie in the theater and the suspense I felt through the whole thing, waiting for the two of them to fight and just feeling like it took way too long. But then when it finally happened, how amazing it was. And we've got that fight scene over in the show notes on the website. Now... When the film Hero came out in 2002, it was the highest grossing Chinese film of all time. It received critical success, just blew the doors off of everybody when it first came out. Now, far lesser known at the time, Donnie Yen also has a role in this one. And now that we've seen so much out of him, it might be worth going back to watch it again, knowing what he's capable of. Jet Li is scheduled to be in the new Triple X movie, The Return of Xander Cage, which stars Vin Diesel coming back to play the role he had in the first movie. Now, whether or not this next piece proves out to be true, we don't know, but you'll notice that in any of the movies that Jet Li's done in the last few years or anything that he's saying he's going to be doing in the future, you don't see any of those epic films, those Wuxia style films or, or anything like that. And that's because he says he's done all that. He doesn't have anything else that he wants to do in that realm. So he's going to be off doing other genres, you know, still doing action movies, still doing dramatic roles, but just not those sort of period pieces that he sort of came to prominence for doing. Now, according to Jet Li, and I'm not quoting here, all the advice he would ever offer can be found in three of his films. In Hero, he teaches that the suffering of a single person is always outweighed by the suffering of a nation. Unleashed teaches that violence is never the answer, and Fearless shows that everyone's greatest enemy is themselves. If you've listened to our episode on the spiritual side of martial arts, episode 45, you've heard my thoughts on the subject. And Jet Li actually has some similar views and is really critical of modern wushu. He feels that the competition and the precision have been so overly emphasized as to remove a great deal of the individuality and the art form from performing wushu forms. He puts tons of emphasis on that spiritual development, that personal development that is a recurring theme through our shows. Maybe someday we can get Jet Li on to talk about it in person. There are a lot of Jet Li movies out there for streaming on Netflix and Amazon. And I urge you to check out some of the ones you may not have seen and maybe revisit a few that you have. I know I will be. As I was putting together the notes for this episode, it reminded me how many great films he's done and how many of them I really do treasure. And the influence that they've had on my martial arts career. So head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for the show notes with links to many of the movies we talked about today. And we've also got some of our favorite Jet Li fight scenes and photos in there for you to check out. Just one easy place to start from if you want to start picking apart, grabbing some more Jet Li movies to check out. If you want to be a guest on the show or you know someone that would be a great interview, go ahead, fill out the form on the website, shoot that off to us. And don't forget, subscribe to the newsletter so you can stay up on all the stuff that we're doing. If you like the show, please subscribe, help us out, or go ahead, download one of the apps, the 
iOS app for iPad, iPhone, whatever you got, or the Google Play app for your Android phone. And if we could trouble you, you know, leave us a kind, friendly review wherever you get your podcast. Help us out with that. It means a lot. Help spread the word on the show. And if we do see your review, if we read your review on the air, go ahead, contact us. We're going to send you some free stuff. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, all with the username Whistlekick. Remember the great stuff we make here. Check it out, whistlekick.com. So thanks for listening to today's episode. These Thursday episodes have a lot of fun putting them together. I know they're short, but we like to save the long stuff for those Monday interviews. So hopefully you're enjoying them. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.